All right, I think this is going to be the last video of this tutorial. Let's jump right in. All right, so today I'm going to be teaching you guys about functions and how to use parameters and return statements. All right, so let's go ahead and um, edit a new program. We'll just call it Funky. Funky, because we're going to be messing with functions, and they're funky. Edit Funky. All right, so there's something you can do something you can write called a function and a function is basically a, a collection of lines of code that you can you can basically call you can run elsewhere in the program without needing to write them all out so let's just say we we this is how you create a function you say the word function and then you give the function a name whatever whatever name you want I'm just gonna call it my function and of course this would be something descriptive for example my mining program um, you might have a mining program that has a function called drop items. So somewhere else in the code you can say if the inventory is full, drop items. Then it'll just send you to this function and then it'll do all the code that's in the drop items function. But um, this is how you create a function. You just say function and you give it the name of it, give it some parentheses, and then you say end. There's an end keyword again. Now every every line of code you put in this in this function you can use elsewhere. I mean, what I mean is, um, the okay, f right here, this isn't code that's gonna execute when I run the program. Let me just show you. Um, I just wrote turtle.forward in that function, but when I actually run this program, it doesn't go forward because I was just defining the function. I wasn't actually using the function. All right, so this is defining the function. Now, Normally, um, what I do is I go ahead and define all my functions, and then I, after that, after you have a bunch, bunch of functions defined, that's where you, after, like, beneath all that is where you write the actual program code that's going to run everything. So now, um, we're going to say, we're just going to say my function. Now, what that does, it's going to, it's going to run this function, and it's going to do whatever code is in there. So now, once we have that in there, this code is going to be ran by the program and that's going to basically call this function which is going to just basically say turtle.forward alright so when now it's going to it's going to actually go forward now um, for a, a, a useful like something that I've uh, like a function that might make sense why you, why you might want to use a function um, let's say you had a program that used the 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 this turtle dot forward in the code a lot. Well, something that I've done, I've I normally create functions in my programs to replace those. So I say function dot forward, or I mean I mean I say function forward, and then the code for that function it says uh, you'll this will make sense. I'm just going to write it out and then I'll explain what it does. So it says while not turtle dot forward turtle dot attack well I need to have a do in there let me go ahead and go down another line also and end alright so you can see here this is basically just an advanced version of turtle.forward that I've created. Um, let me first show you what would happen if you didn't have this. So let's just make a for loop and it's going to say for i equals 1 through 10. So it's going to go through this code 10 times. It's going to do the normal turtle.forward that you're familiar with. Turtle.forward. And it's gonna, then we just say end. So right now, since I've defined this function, but right now it's not going to be, it's not going to be used because right now I'm just saying for ten times, do the turtle API turtle dot forward. All right. Now watch what happens. There's a problem with this. What what if I'm standing in front of the turtle and I say turtle dot forward? What happens? Well, it comes and finds me, and I've just blocked it. So it, it just tried to move ten times. And I blocked it. So 
this program that you wrote that you thought was just going to move forward ten times. Maybe you didn't think about it, but what happens when a mob comes by and walks and walks and blocks your turtle? It might lose track of where it is. So let me show you um, how my function that I wrote kind of fixes that problem. So instead of saying for ten times do turtle dot forward, we're just going to say my normal forward, which is a function that I wrote, which is this one up here. So now when we say this, every time we say forward, it's going to go come up here and do all this code every time we say forward. So what's going to happen now, what this function actually does, I'm going to explain it in English kind of terms and you can see kind of how it relates to the code. This function says um, try to go forward, but um, if you can't go forward, attack in front of yourself and keep attacking until you can go forward and then, then you're done. So that fixes the problem. I use a while loop to do that, so I say while not forward, so this says while you can't go forward, do, a, do an attack, and just keep repeating, um, keep attacking until you can actually go forward, and then you can go ahead and stop attacking. Does that make sense? So um, you, can see, you can see I used the turtle.forward to get the true or false value back from it because you know they, re they return true or false like I showed you in the Lua prompt. Well, um, even though it's just in this while loop, it actually tries to go forward. So it's going to first try to go forward. Even though it's not like a normal statement, I'm not just saying turtle.forward, it's still going to try to go forward even in this, in this parentheses uh, while loop thing. So it's still trying to go forward. So if it can actually go forward, it's not going to even do this loop at all. But if it can't go forward, then it and then it will um, attack and it'll keep repeating that until it can go forward. So let me go ahead and try this code now. It's going to attack me if I get in its way. Well, it's not going to reach me until I get close enough. There it goes. All right. So now I think what just happened is you can see how it ran into the wall. This is something you got to watch out for in programs. Right now it's stuck in an infinite loop. It's trying to attack. It's attacking this wall. It's attacking it with all its heart, but the wall isn't dying because it's not a mob. I mean, you could do you can dig walls, but you can't attack walls. Attacking a wall isn't going to do anything. So you can see I can't type anything. Um, so this this program is stuck in an infinite loop, and that's something you got to watch out for. Um, so what what you can do to to terminate programs that are stuck in situations like this, hold in Control on your keyboard, and then hold in T for like one second, or a couple seconds, and then it'll terminate the program like that. Or you can just break the turtle and pick it back up, and put it back down. So that was an infinite loop that I just got myself into, which isn't a huge deal. I mean, but it's just you just want to try to avoid those in if you write an an actual program. All right, so um, one other thing I want to teach you, which kind of is similar to functions. Let me just go ahead and make a new program. Um, I'm going to call it edit args. Arg. No, I'll just call it arg, like a pirate. Um, it's using something called args. So... Um, what you would use, what I'm trying to show you now, um, what if you wanted to be able to give a value with your program? So for example, you would say, let's just say you're writing a program to make your turtle spin around and dance. All right. So let's say, let me just edit arg. Arg. You would say four. So this, this for loop, it's going to go from one to four because it takes, it's going to, it takes four times for a turtle to turn in order for it to do a full 360 degree spin. So for i, sorry I did that wrong, i equals f 1 comma 4, do turtle dot turn right, and then end. Alright, so what this program is going to do is just going to turn right four times and basically that's spinning around. So if I run this it's just going to spin in place and then stop. Alright, then it stops. So what if I wanted to make a program called spin? Let me just rename arg to spin. Rename arg spin. Now if I edit spin, it's the same thing we were just working with. All right. 
So let's say you wanted to be able to, instead of just saying the word spin when you run the program, let's say you wanted to be able to have options. So let's say in, in, um, instead of just typing the word spin and pushing enter, maybe you can have a program that can handle numbers afterwards. So you can say spin 10 and what that, what that would do, the turtle would spin around 10 times and then stop. You could also say spin 100 and then the turtle will spin around 100 times and stop. So with everything I've taught you so far, there's nothing that you can really do that can respond to extra input and, re and um, run loops a certain number of times depending on the, the input that the user gives it. So what we're, what we're going to do now, actually, let me cut the video real quick so I can remember how to do this. Okay, I remember. Let me go back to edit spin. Okay. At the start of your code, I mean, this is... After you define your functions or whatever, whatever else you want to put at the start, at the top of your 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 program. Um, but at the start of your actual executing code, you're gonna want to put this. Um, just make sure you copy this, and then I'll explain what it does. Local args equals those pointy brackets, and then you say dot 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 three dots. All right. Then let me just give, give myself some space. I need one more line. This is how you get a one of the numbers from the from when when someone typed in the program name with the number. This is how you get that number. Let's just first create a variable. So x equals we'll say args and then we'll say one. This will get the first number that was given. Um, you could also say y. You can get the second number that was given. So that's how you do that. So basically what this is doing is if you were to say spin one five, um, so you're giving it two numbers to, to work with, this would become X and that would become Y in the code. Um, these are basically, they're called arguments and that's what args is short for. So we get, we're giving it the name of the program and we're giving it two arguments. Um, let me go back to edit spin to, sh to show you. This is creating an array. So this is creating basically a list of all the arguments. And we're just calling it args. It's short for arguments. So it's, it's a local variable kind of called args. And it's storing a list of all the arguments. So you don't really need to understand how all that works in depth. But just, I mean, if you copy this code, this is how you get the variables from the arguments list. You would say... However, however many arguments you want to accept, this is how you get them out of the out of the um, the list of arguments. I mean, you can name the variables whatever you want, and then you just set them equal to args, square brackets, and you give the number. Um, this is the first argument, and second argument. I can show you. I can just print it, print out those. Print. I'll just do one argument. Print. You entered. Colon space. And then I concatenate the x. Basically, I, I'm adding on the x to the end of this text. Let me just delete the second one because I'm not going to use that. So x is going to be the first argument from the list of arguments. And then it's just going to print out you entered that, that argument. So let's just go ahead and save and exit and run it. It's called spin, even though this has nothing to do with what I'm showing you. I'm going to say spin 5. You entered five. All right. So now you can see how that that's working. That's how to that's how to get the numbers into variables. So now let me show you how to use that variable um, in the for loop. So let me just delete this print statement. Now instead of saying in this for loop, go from numbers one through four. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna say go from numbers one through x. All right. So if we typed in in the turtle command uh, command line, we typed in spin 10, it's going to spin 10 times. Oh, wait, no, that's wrong. Um, it's, it would turn right 10 times, which is like two and a half full spins. So this code, um, this is actually, this for loop is just to do one, one full spin. So let, let me change this up a little bit. Just, just follow along. Um, I'm going to name this, I'm going to create a function up here called spin. All right. 
Oh, it's going to be called spin once. Spin once. I'll just call it spin 360. That makes more sense to me. Spin 360. Now we're going to write this code for this function, all right? And basically it's just going to be this. And since I can't copy and paste, I'm just going to go ahead and write this in right here. For i equals um, 1, 1, 4, so it's 4 times turn right. And that's going to basically do a 360 degree spin. Turtle dot turn right and end loop. Okay, so now we have a function called spin360 that we can use in the other code. So now let me go ahead and delete this loop because I already have it in my function. So now we're going to create another loop. We're going to say for, um, for, let's just create a variable called a, start it at 1, and we're going to go to x. So from numbers 1 through x, it's going to do this code in here. And now this code, we just got to say spin 360. So um, this x is going to be the number we give it. So if we give it the number 1, well, it's just going to spin once. But if we if we say spin 10, it's going to spin 10 times. So let me, let me go ahead and demonstrate. We're going to say spin 1, enter, spins once and stops. We'll do spin 2. So I'm going to spin two times and stop. We can do, we can go crazy, do a big number like spin seven. It's just going to be spinning like crazy. So as soon as that stops, I'll go ahead and show you the code one last time. And that's going to be it. All right. Edit spin. Make sure you understand. Um, I'm just going to go over the key, the key things again for this episode. The functions, you can define those at the top of the code, and these won't execute until you actually call them. So this code is here, but we're not using it. I mean, until we actually call it. So um, the program actually starts when you get the arguments. So it's, this, is, this is what you do to get the arguments and stick them into a variable. This x can be whatever you want it to be. I called it x. Then we have this other for loop that happens. It's going to have an a variable called a start at 1 and go up until it reaches the value of x and it's going to do the code in this for loop that many times. So this x can be, can be different depending on what the user gives. And then um, all the code it's going to do is spin 360 and that's defined up here as this this stuff which is basically it's going to spin it around 360 degrees and in order to accomplish that with the turtle you just have to turn right or turn left four times alright so using all that stuff I taught you I think you can understand all the programs I've written or most of them so go ahead and if you've collected programs from me go ahead and go look at the code for them see if you can make sense of all the stuff I've done and you can get some ideas um, I've, I've written programs for tree farms, wheat farms, different types of farms, um, different types of uh, excavation mining programs, and so on. Um, so go ahead and whatever, go ahead and look at some other programs, go ahead and try to figure some stuff out, maybe get some ideas. Um, hopefully you guys, hopefully this made sense. I put a lot of time and work into this, this thing. I, I just, I'm just really hoping to get more people interested in programming in general, because I think it's great. I mean... Seriously, the future is all about programming, and there's going to be so many jobs, and the skills that you learn in this, and that you, that you train yourself in, you're going to, you'll be glad that you had if, in the future when, when that's going to be such, there's going to be so many jobs in, in programming. So, hopefully this interests you, hopefully you can find some fun in it to get some good practice while having fun at the same time. That's how I look at it. So, let me know if you have any questions. I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.